snakes on your left, snakes on your right, giant cockroaches behind you, and in front of you, the open sea. It's difficult to get to this island in the first place, but it's almost impossible to get out alive. Here's how to survive Snake Island. About 33 kilometers off the coast of Brazil, near the state of Sao Paulo, there's a place so dangerous that it's uninhabited and closed to visitors or tours. Ilha de Camada Grande, also known as Snake Island, is only 430,000 square meters, but it is home to a lot of danger. It's estimated that there is at least one snake per square meter, and about 4,000 of them are golden lancehead pit vipers. They're one of the deadliest snakes in the world. This place is feared even by local residents, who tell stories of people going to the island but never coming back. How deadly is a golden lancehead's venom? What other creatures are on the island? And why could pirates be a problem too? Unless you're in charge of fixing this lonely lighthouse, there's no reason for you to go to Snake Island. But if you arrive there by accident, how could you survive? Step 1. Sail carefully. If you go sailing or fishing near the island, you'd better keep your distance. Snake Island is surrounded by rocks, so it is dangerous to swim near it, and it could break your boat. In late February of 2019, a small fishing boat with six men got caught in a storm. It began sinking near Snake Island. Knowing exactly which island they were near, four of the men decided to swim to shore. The other two remained in the boat, choosing to die on their own terms. The four men were on the island for three days. They stayed on the beach without entering the forest. For three days, they drank rainwater and ate bananas they found on the edge of the forest. Then they spotted a boat going near the island and quickly swam to it. The boat picked them up and delivered them to the nearest emergency room on the coast. Step 2. Watch out for cockroaches. Lethal vipers are not the only threat on Snake Island. There are many non-venomous snakes, giant cockroaches, and locusts that cover the island. If you're anywhere on Snake Island, you should regularly check for these not-so-little critters and try to avoid them the best you can. On the other hand, if you have a strong stomach, they could save you from starving. Cockroaches are safe to eat and a good source of protein and essential amino acids. Bon appetit! Step 3. Deal with the snakes. If you're stuck on this island, you will have to face the snakes. Try to find a stick. It will help you fight the snakes off and prevent them from biting you. If you get bitten, prepare to suffer. Since the golden lancehead pit vipers on the island evolved naturally, they developed a venom up to five times stronger than a regular lancehead vipers. This powerful venom causes severe physical complications, including kidney failure, brain hemorrhaging, and intestinal bleeding. It can also cause muscle tissue to die, so you're going to feel as if your skin is melting. Take off any rings, watches, and bracelets, as they could become really hard to remove if an arm begins swelling. If you have an EpiPen, use it to treat symptoms of anaphylaxis, like swelling of the face, mouth, or throat, hives, or difficulty breathing. The only way to increase your chance of surviving is with medical help, which takes us to our next step. Step 4. Bring a doctor. Only biologists and researchers visit the island. They study the golden lancehead pit vipers, and the Brazilian Navy visits once a year to maintain the lighthouse, which has been automated since the 1920s. The government requires that every team that visits the island includes a doctor. If a golden lancehead bites you, you have a 7% chance of dying. Being treated by a doctor can reduce those chances to 3%. Step 5. Beware of Pirates Despite the island's dangerous snakes, wildlife smugglers, also known as biopirates, have made frequent stops to trap and sell the snakes. A single golden lancehead pit viper is worth about $10,000 to $30,000 on illegal markets. And since this is the only place where they exist, the golden lanceheads are listed as endangered on the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List. In November 2018, John Chow, a U.S. missionary 
landed on North Sentinel Island. It's home to one of the few indigenous groups that have remained almost completely isolated from the rest of the world. They've achieved that level of seclusion by attacking anyone who dares to step foot on their island. Chow was chased away with bows and arrows two times. He recklessly tried a third attempt to enter the forbidden territory. Others have barely survived these attacks, but the Chow's luck finally run out this time around? How to Survive presents the North Sentinel Island. North Sentinel Island is located in the Bay of Tropical Beaches. Much of the region remains a mystery. Much of this has to do with it being under India's jurisdiction and laws making it a restricted area off limits to the general public. More than a century ago, the British colonized some of the Adaman Island. The takeover was extremely violent and even introduced diseases such as syphilis. The fear of the same catastrophic fate as their neighbors might be one of the reasons for the Sentinelese people's hostility towards outsiders. Few people have successfully made contact with the Sentinelese and walked away safe and sound to tell the tale. We're about to show you some of the most notorious stories. How could coconut save your life? Which items shouldn't you touch on the island? And what words helped a woman survive? Number three, a coconut goes a long way. In 1991, anthropologist Madhubala Chudapitiye and a small group of her colleagues succeeded interacting with some of the island's residents. When they spotted their small boat, four Sentinelese men armed with bows and arrows came to the shoreline. The anthropologist floated some coconuts over from a distance for the men to collect. The exchange went on for a few hours until a younger man raised his bow but stopped after Chudapatiye spoke using tribal words she had learned on other islands. With this level of trust established, the group came back shortly after for a second visit. On this trip, some of the Sentinelese even climbed on board, helping themselves to an entire bag of coconuts. But things went south when a researcher tried to take an ornament that one of the men was wearing. The disrespectful act was met with anger and the man brought out his knife making it clear it was time for the team to leave. Luckily, no one was hurt. Number two, hospitality ran out. T.N. Pandit served as a regional head of India's Ministry of Tribal Affairs starting in the 1960s. Over several decades, he visited North Sentinel several times as part of expeditions without incident, until one situation when he encountered two dozen islanders at the beach. One aimed his bow at the anthropologist, but a woman prevented him from firing at Pandit. The Sentinelese people were usually friendly to him, but they made it clear when his team members were venturing too far. Like on another trip, when a man signaled toward Pandit in a hostile manner, he drew his knife out and made a cutting gesture. You're giving them presents, not making trains. And if you're approaching the island, do it slowly and with respect. Otherwise, you could be dead in seconds. Number one, pushing the limits. Let's go back to John Chow's story. After he bribed local fishermen to bring him to the region, he spent two days trying to teach passages from the Bible to the Sentinelese. His efforts were not well received. Chow was forced off the island twice. On his third attempt, he was killed and buried on the beach. His actions were done without permission from Indian authorities. He also hadn't been tested for any transmissible diseases. Chow died because he failed to understand that the islanders just wanted to be left alone. Venomous snakes and Komodo dragons, volcanic gas and radioactive waste, these places look like paradise from afar, but once you're there, they can be hell on Earth. And if you had to choose which one to visit, I would recommend the haunted one. Here's how to survive. The most dangerous islands. Ramri Island, Myanmar. During World War II, hundreds of Japanese soldiers were forced into the island marshes by British forces. They were set upon by the huge population of saltwater crocodiles. With no knowledge of the region and almost no supplies, 
the Crocs had meals delivered right to their door. If you travel to this island, stay out of the marshes, or you could face the same fate. Miyaki Jima, Japan. Often referred to as Gas Mask Island, it is located about 100 kilometers south of Tokyo. It's surrounded by mysterious waters known for disappearing vessels. It also has a volcano, which erupted in June 2000, covering the island in ash and clouds of gas. Residents had to evacuate for five years after the eruption. When they returned, they were required to have a gas mask with them at all times. But wait, there's more. Since the volcano eruption, the chain of islands Mayaki Jima is part of has had to deal with 17,500 earthquakes. If you're planning on visiting Mayaki Jima, bring your own gas mask and stay alert to the warning signs that will indicate the time to use it. Gruenard Island, Scotland. During World War II, Gruenard Island, aka Anthrax Island, was the home of biological warfare testing undertaken by the British government. The experiments using anthrax killed hundreds of sheep and resulted in quarantining of the island. It was decontaminated using formaldehyde in the 1980s. Gruenard was declared safe to visit in 1990 and is now used as a grazing island for sheep. But just to be safe, avoid the soil coming in contact with your skin and gastrointestinal tract while you're there. If you get body aches, start vomiting, or have shortness of breath, it could be anthrax poisoning. If you start to suffer any of these symptoms, get antibiotic treatment right away. Komodo Island, Indonesia. This place is hot, dry, and covered in shrubs. And behind the shrubs, three meter long venomous lizards. Komodo is one of the five small islands where you can find, you guessed it, Komodo dragons. These reptiles can eat up to 80% of their body weight in a single feeding and they will shred anything from carry-on to a big water buffalo and sometimes even humans. If you want to see these beasts in person, make sure to travel with a group. Komodos usually target prey that is alone. Stay on the island paths, avoid using strong fragrances, and avoid the place altogether if you're bleeding. These lizards have a great sense of smell and can detect your blood from kilometers away. Paviglia, Italy. Nicknamed the Island of Ghosts, this place is unpopulated and is known as one of the most haunted locations in Europe. During the 14th century, Black Plague victims were sent there to quarantine. Only a small number of people left the island again. About 160,000 corpses were burned. Legend has it that over 50% of the soil on the island is made up of human ash. In 1922, a mental hospital was built there, and rumors spread that experiments were being done on the patients. The island was abandoned in 1968 when the hospital closed down. You need special authorization from the municipality of Venice to go to Paveglia. Once there, don't go into the buildings because many of them are unstable and you could get trapped. Since there are limited visitors, you might not be rescued anytime soon. Come to think of it, this would be a good opportunity to check if the island is actually on it. Fairlawns Islands, US. Located near San Francisco, this area was used to dump radioactive waste between 1946 and 1970. The islands are also overrun with mice and have a big elephant seal population that attracts great white sharks. The Fairlawns have been closed to the general public since 1969 but at least they have the largest colony of nesting seabirds in the United States. If you make it to the islands, stay away from the seals. They can be aggressive and might be followed by some hungry sharks. The right way to see the wildlife would be by taking an authorized boat tour. North Sentinel Island, India. This mysterious isle is home to a group of indigenous people who have remained isolated from the rest of the world. These hunter-gatherers live in huts and are armed with spears, knives, and arrows. They are extremely hostile to outsiders and will attack anyone who comes close to the island. You should never go to North Sentinel Island, but if you unintentionally find yourself there, approach the shore with caution. The Sentinel Lees might be hidden, waiting to defend their territory. Keep your distance in case they throw some warning spears. If you have fruit or ornaments, 
float them over first as a present and don't expect anything in return. Whatever you do, don't try to touch them. It might be the last thing you do. Also because they likely don't have immune defenses to many of the microbes found off the island, they should be left alone for their own safety. Snake Island, Brazil. Located 33 kilometers off the coast of Brazil, this little island is packed with a lot of danger. It's estimated that in some areas, you wouldn't be able to take more than a couple of steps without encountering a snake. Among these snakes, there are about 4,000 golden lancehead vipers. It's one of the most venomous and deadliest snakes in the world. Their venom evolved to kill prey faster. Just one bite would rot your flesh and even kill you. The island is closed to visitors. Only research groups and members of the Brazilian Navy can go, and they need to bring a doctor in case someone gets bitten. Saba, Netherlands Antilles. This lovely island in the Caribbean is the last place you'd want to be in during hurricane season, but stay away from June to November just to be sure. If you are there during a hurricane, you should take flashlights, provisions, and radios with extra batteries. Secure all doors and board up the windows. Reunion Island. Located in the Indian Ocean, this French territory offers beautiful waterfalls, great rum, and thousands of sharks. 11 people have died and eight more have been injured in shark attacks since 2011. In 2019, 44-year-old Richard Martin Turner was killed while he was snorkeling. His body was not found, but the shark that attacked him was captured and x-rayed. Inside its stomach was Turner's hand with his wedding ring still on it. If you want to return safely from your vacation at Reunion Island, don't go swimming or snorkeling in restricted areas. If you like a challenge in the water, we have one for you. This beautiful sinkhole in Egypt should be a thrilling experience. Just make sure you don't join the 200 people who haven't made it out of the blue hole. Find out how to reach the surface again right here on How to Survive.